In 1986, there was one fateful day that's changed thousands of lives when a core nuclear reactor destroyed the city of Chernobyl with deadly radiation, from the ruins of a preserved kindergarten class to a forest painted red from the explosion we're going to take a dive into 20 creepy stories from Chernobyl that will haunt your dreams. <laughs> abandoned Amusement Park There's nothing that quite beats the eerie atmosphere of an abandoned amusement park, is there? This particular creepy one was constructed under the Russian name of Park of Culture and Rest, but was ultimately left and abandoned in the city of Pripyat. It was founded on February 4th in 1970 and was only ever open for a single day. The park was intended to serve as a type of entertainment for evacuees of Ukraine following the major Chernobyl disaster of April 1986. Before the whole area was evacuated in 1979, it had been proclaimed a full and established city with a growing population of over 49,000 people. As the projected opening day of May 1st in 1986 never came, the festive decorations left behind still serve as a stark contrast to the haunting abandoned rides. Most of them, surprisingly, remain fully intact, most notably the bumper cars. You can't be too careful though. Even with the playful appearance it might give, to this day, the park still contains varying degrees of radiation, especially the gap of space under the large and looming Ferris wheel. So, if for some reason you're actually looking to cross this off your list of abandoned places to visit, just make sure to not touch anything. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. It might be hard to fathom, but not everyone wanted to leave Chernobyl after its huge and lasting implications. Whether it was out of comfort of their home territory and wanting to go back to their houses, or fear of being labeled as outsiders, there were quite a few people that stayed, despite the pain and horrible side effects that they seemed to be going through. This picture is of the man that decided to stay in Chernobyl. We don't know his name or his life before any of the incidents that happened in all of that devastation, but we can see that he has some strong inflictions on his body over the years. It's a bit hard to tell if this was his face that actually looked like this or if there is some kind of smudge over the camera, but what do you guys think happened? Is this a direct result of being too close to radiation? Or could it be that this man always had a bit more of an unusual face and he preferred to live alone in solitude? What would you do in this situation? Some people chose to live out the rest of their short-lived days in the only home they ever knew, while many were forced to leave forever and simply never looked back. It's not a decision that anyone can agree upon, but a necessary decision nonetheless. Tell us your thoughts and what you would choose in the comments and be sure to write out hashtag missing topic with your answer. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? The Living Ghost Town The war between Russia and Ukraine that started in early 2022 has brought some of the more recent controversies of Chernobyl to light again. One instance came about when the troops traveled through a deserted city, exchanging a few rounds of gunfire, grenade tossing and mortar explosions that were going off the whole time but the city itself had an intense shadow of the past looming over it. The abandoned and decrepit buildings, as well as the wear and tear of the street signs and public fixtures, all told a story within a story. The name of the city is called Pripyat, and it's practically the heart of Chernobyl, making it a very poignant location for a dark and violent battle. In fact, soldiers in the middle of training would have to periodically check a monitor scanning the nearby radiation level so they would know if they would need to flee for safety or if they could go a bit longer still. The landscape of the city looks very different than it once did with a huge surplus of people and industries. At one time, there were over 50,000 people living within this range, only for it to be reduced to the vast emptiness and decay it now faces. Nature has even started to seep back in and over the concrete. Trees, plants and wildlife have grown over the past 22 or so years and tried to reclaim its territory from the humans that destroyed it but it isn't like the city had been fully evacuated for the full period of time. Many people continue to venture out into the danger zone, whether to prove they can survive it or because there's nowhere else for them to go. Don't step on lava. Eight months after the April 1986 nuclear incident, some workers returned to see the damages beneath the number four reactor. That's where they found something that no one could have expected. Black lava was oozing out of the reactor core like a man-made volcano. The team named it the elephant's foot because of the uncanny resemblance it had to the type of animal leg, 
but the sensors the crew had signaled that it was dangerously radioactive. Its exposure to the entire room was full of lethal amounts of radiation and would take less than five minutes of direct interaction before they would be permanently affected. Another team came back again a decade later, this time from the U.S. Department of Energy's International Nuclear Safety Project. They studied as much as they could from Chernobyl and discovered that the elephant's foot found them before actually weighing over two metric tons. It's now officially called an LFCM, which stands for a lava-like fuel-containing material. But that doesn't really answer what it is or how it came to be. Once researchers were able to get some test samples of the substance, they learned that it was not leftovers that came from the nuclear fuel. Instead, it turns out that it was actually a rare substance called corium that was produced when the nuclear fuel and a part of the reactor core structure overheated and melted together. Corium is so rare that it has only ever been discovered five times in history. Once during the Three Mile Island accident in 1979 over in Pennsylvania, three times at the Fukushima Daiichi plant disaster in Japan from 2011, and of course, here in Chernobyl. There's still a lot to learn about corium, but for now, just know that it's better to stay away from it. Children of Chernobyl People, animals, and children of all ages were drastically affected by the catastrophic incident that took place in Chernobyl on that drastic day. Whether they were children who were born in the city or those that were born from their survivors elsewhere, they each had lasting impacts that shook them to their very DNA. The one silver lining that was concluded after some time had passed was that for every parent who had genetic mutations from radiation exposure did not seem to pass on any lingering side effects to their children. While there were a few cases of hereditary issues, it seems as though the children are not going to be undergoing any unexpected or drastic changes as they grow up. The director of the U.S. National Cancer Institute's Division of Cancer Epidemiology and Genetics said, if there is a deleterious mutation, it's going to be rare. We can't say that it will never happen, but we don't see this as a common public health crisis. So at least that's a bit reassuring. It doesn't mean any of them are completely out of the woods, though. Scientists know there aren't a lot of opportunities to study the long-term effects of radiation, so they'll be keeping an eye on the children's development as they grow. From cancer treatments to any genetic abnormalities, a lot of the children that escaped from Chernobyl have had consistent cases of thyroid cancer, but it's been treatable. Health officials are hopeful that studying both children that came from Ukraine and offspring of their survivors as they grow up will provide some unique answers to health issues that they've yet to be found. It's a bit morbid to think about, but could be a huge step in the medical field. The Giant Duga Radar Chernobyl is a much bigger place than most people realize. It wasn't just a radiation plant, but a full and established city that was taken in its prime. Deep in the forest north of Ukraine's capital, Kiev, for example, is a wonderful and quiet forest that just happens to be full of high levels of radiation exposure. If you decide to venture out into the danger, like many foolhardy travelers have recently, you could find the Duga radar. Duga means arc, and the radar was once an established military facing f Duga means ARC, and the radar was once an established military facility from the Soviet Union's communist empire. It's still an impressive structure today, standing at a massive 150 meters, or 492 feet high, that travels almost 700 meters in length, the same as nearly 2,300 feet. It might be a bit strange to walk through, though. It's almost like an archaeological expedition as you pass over broken electronic devices, discarded vehicles, and decaying steel barrels from a different time. The entire area had been left almost completely untouched for years after the effects of exposure, but more recently has been permitted for tourists with close supervision. One tour guide has said that tourists are overwhelmed by the enormous size of the installation and its aesthetic high-tech beauty. No one expects it to be that big. But with that being said, and the fall of the Soviet Union not leaving many survivors in this day and age, no one is quite sure what exactly the Duga radar accomplished. Was it meant to block missiles or telegram reports? It exists only as a receiver, so it must have been meant to intercept some kind of system. But then the Soviet army also used a lot of spy tricks and fake numbers for their equipment to throw the enemy off their trail. The Fall of Kopachi Village Known as the legendary village with the saddest fate, the Kopachi village once thrived in Chernobyl before life drastically changed for the worse. 
It sits four kilometers away or nearly two and a half miles from the destructive power plant and right on the bank of the Pripyat River of the Kyiv region. In 1986, there was a population of 1114 people from the small village, but now there's only the leftovers of a small kindergarten. After everyone was immediately evacuated, the area was considered so intensely full of dense radiation that a government project decided to just bulldoze everything and hope it would quell the poisoned air down into the ground. At the time, they had no idea the lasting damages it would do to the soil or the groundwater that eventually seeped out into the rest of the environment. The radiation above ground still exceeds over four times what's considered normal for the area, so it doesn't seem like the structural overhaul amounted to too much. The real fear was in case any wooden buildings were to catch fire and release radioactive isotopes into the air, but having a poisoned water supply might not have been the better move. The kindergarten is impressive in its own right though, even after 29 years of being left alone. The toys, lockers, and classroom decorations have all been left in place as if some students could wander back in and finish their lesson. It's definitely a chilling location to visit, but a great reminder for a life that no longer exists. Third Angel's Trumpet There are many stories throughout history that talk about angels appearing after devastating events, but this sure takes it to another level. A lone angel statue stands ominously at the entrance to Chernobyl's Wormwood Star Memorial Complex. From the outside, it seemingly looks to be playing a silent song with a trumpet. This sculpture was created by Ukrainian artist Anatoly Haidamaka as a tribute to those whose lives were lost as a result of one of the world's most deadly nuclear explosions. The angel statue was officially named Wormwood Star and stands in the center of the Chernobyl town of Memorial Park. It exists as a dedication to the lasting impact of Chernobyl and the lives that were both lost and affected by the terrible explosion. Construction of the park didn't begin until 2010. The intention was to match the actual opening of the site in time to coincide with the 25th anniversary of the Chernobyl disaster. The actual monument of the Wormwood Star Angel statue followed suit as it was unveiled on April 26, 2011 a full 25 years after the tragedy fully overtook the town. The name of the Wormwood Star was taken from the Bible, specifically from the final book of the New Testament, wherein the Star of Wormwood is mentioned and fell to the earth after the third angel sounds his trumpet. If anything, it sure is a fitting image for Chernobyl, wouldn't you agree? Zombie Attacks As if nuclear waste wasn't enough, now there are apparently zombies in Chernobyl too? This video has been making its rounds on the internet for several years and somehow just seems to keep popping up. It claims to show a grotesque zombie attack where a man is ripped apart limb from limb and eventually eaten alive. Some have made unfounded claims that the footage comes from a Russian helicopter with equipped night vision cameras and that it is in fact a Russian soldier being chased and eaten alive. That might seem a bit far-fetched. The first upload of this video online was in early 2007, with the word stalker appearing in the description. If you're expecting a realistic depiction, don't get your hopes up too quickly though. The truth of the matter is that this clip is part of a larger video sequence that comes from a viral marketing campaign meant to promote the stalker video game Shadow of Chernobyl. See, this fake zombie attack video was created by GSC Game World and was published by the company THQ in early 2007 the same year it started gaining traction. The domain URL at the end of the video led some to believe that it was created by a Russian network security company. However, this was not the case as the URL redirected back to the official website of the PC game. It just takes a bit of investigative digging to see where the truth really lied. At least it's a relief to know that we're safe from radioactive zombies. For now. The Fox Sandwich Special it looks like this fox did not need to travel far for takeout. In just under 24 hours on YouTube, this viral video of a fox making a sandwich reached over a million views. The video in question was taken by a Radio Free Europe team that was in the area. While most sites surrounding Chernobyl have long been devoid of humans after the nuclear disaster, the animals didn't seem to quite get the memo. This particular section has become home to many animals, including groups of hungry foxes, this fox in particular approached a radio crew in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. As the group was filming, they were openly greeted by this curious yet sickly fox. The radio crew decided to indulge the poor animal as they threw a few pieces of bread and some meat towards it. 
The fox went for the meat first before it picked up a piece of bread to go and stuffed its mouth. After getting a taste, the fox began to run around and pick up more and more pieces of bread until it held in its mouth something that resembled an impressive six-layer sandwich. With its mouth full of bread and meat, the fox bid the crew goodbye and scurried back into the forest with its newfound gains. While foxes are already known for their mad hunting skills, it looks like we can add sandwich making to their list of hidden talents. A blanket over Chernobyl. So it looks like we're just putting a cover on this whole event, aren't we? In Chernobyl, right at the heart of the world's worst nuclear disaster sites, a giant protective cover was being moved into place, just a few feet at a time. This cover was built over the course of several years to shadow the Chernobyl reactor and is fully designed to secure the area for at least 100 years. The massive cover is known as the new safe confinement. Despite its more than ideal use, the concept and functionality did present some major construction challenges. The cover was built in two halves and only joined together toward the end of the building process. The huge structure is nearly the length of three football fields. The cover is recorded to weigh close to 36,000 tons and is reportedly even taller than the Statue of Liberty. It looks to be quite costly too, as the estimated projected cost will likely hit a high $1.6 billion to complete. The entire structure moved to its final resting place on November 29, 2016, exactly 30 years and 7 months after the disaster of Chernobyl that set all of this in motion. But if anything, we should be calling this massive accomplishment one of the seven wonders of the world at this point. Recent Radiation Spikes Just like a bad stain, radiation appears to be just as impossible to get out. Even decades after the explosion, radiation leaks and exposure have proven to be as bad in and around Chernobyl as it was when the core first reacted. In fact, there have even been several radiation spikes just recently. One of these spikes happened near Chernobyl's nuclear power plant, which has since been seized by Russian forces since the 2002 Ukraine invasion. The aggressive Russian troops took control of the plant, which is home to one of the worst nuclear explosions in recent history. After which, the radiation levels increased 20-fold, as reported by nearby monitoring stations. But fortunately, there's little need to worry though. Many experts say that another major nuclear disaster occurring in the same spot after all of this time is highly unlikely. The sudden spike and rise in radiation was found out to be caused by heavy-hitting military vehicles stirring the contaminated soil in the exclusion zone that surrounds the abandoned plant. It turns out that burying exposed radiation supplies wasn't such a long-term solution after all. The biggest spike in radiation was reported to be closer to the damaged reactor. As a precaution, radiation levels are constantly monitored and observed for situations just like this one. The spike that occurred there was reported to be about five times more than what's considered usual. There's still an ongoing battle against Russian soldiers in the area in order to make sure that nothing like the 1986 disaster happens again. But hopefully we can put our learned lessons to use. Wildlife finds a way. Compared to other similar locations, minus the huge amounts of radiation, Chernobyl has had a huge amount of wolf tracks discovered. It was recently found out to be around 19 times the common amount, specifically in the exclusion zone of the disaster site. Following the nuclear fallout of Chernobyl, the trees surrounding the area turned a peculiar shade of red from all of the radiation and therefore received the moniker of Red Forest. It was in this Red Forest that wolves appeared to be the apex predator. Some studies even suggested that the population of wolves in the Red Forest is around seven times higher than that of other comparable sites in just this area alone. Though not the only animal to be found in this area, some others have benefited from the lack of intrusive people. The Eurasian lynx is a species of cat that was once thought to have been extinct. However, in 2014, scientists had discovered that they had made a comeback in the most unlikely of places, Chernobyl. It seemed that, like many other animals in the area, the lynx survived due to the lack of humans. Though it seems that animals on land weren't the only ones who had ill effects of radiation, as birds had been particularly affected by the fallout. Some barn swallows that surround the area have appeared to have suffered from several mutations. But overall, it appears that animals' ideal locations is a place devoid of all humans. Who would have thought? Tourists in Danger The exclusion zone of Chernobyl has always been a hotspot for tourists, but it's always for the right reasons. 
While the danger is mostly at a minimum during tour hours, there's a secret culture of stalkers that lurk after dark. They consist mainly of young Ukrainian men who sneak into the zone illegally after hours. Some of these stalkers have had the idea to start their own illegal tours to people willing to explore the more restricted and dangerous parts of the zone. There have even been rumors of more dangerous activities being held as the result of these stalkers, such as bodies being buried in the Red Forest. Due to the fact that it's so close to Chernobyl's dead city, a place so contaminated that even the police are not allowed to step in, the region makes the perfect place for this kind of cover-up. Interestingly, some of these actions may be the result of the Stalker Game series, which shows a more romanticized view of the Chernobyl ruins. The game makes it seem as though Chernobyl is the perfect place to prove one's bravery or endurance in the harsh ruins of such an environment, but also leads to some illegal activity, as stated before. Since a lot of people can't differentiate reality from virtual reality, many will likely continue to venture out into these harmful spots despite clear signs of danger. The Immortals of Gavdos Let's take a step back from the doom and gloom of the radioactive disaster to look at something a bit more tropical. This is the island of Gavdos, a Greek getaway on the southernmost tip of Europe, quite a while away from Ukraine and Russia. So what's the connection? In the late 1990s, the island was inhabited by a group of Russian physicists with a single clear motive. By the end of the time there, they wanted to reprogram their bodies to not die, or in other words, achieve immortality. It was founded by one nuclear physicist named Andre, who had been consumed by high levels of radiation on his voluntary mission to study Chernobyl. When he realized the scope of people that were affected like he was, as well as the limited medical assistance for the time, he decided to take matters into his own hands. Eventually, he gathered a group of other researchers that he trusted and brought them to Gavdos where they became farmers that lived off the land. That, and they drank a lot of homemade vodka. Andre once joked that he was able to save his own life by working hard during the day, having intellectual discussions at night, and sweating everything out over drinks. When they weren't farming, they were reading old Russian philosophy books and coming up with revelations. Maybe they aren't actively seeking some kind of new medical invention, but they definitely figured something out about how to live right. Next Generation of Wolf Dogs The radiation of Chernobyl had lasting effects far and wide, and not just in terms of distance. As unfortunate as it is to even think about, a lot of animals were affected just as badly, if not worse than some of the people. Dogs like these, however, were probably not a part of the original wave of inflicted, these dogs are supposedly the descendants of the pets that were left behind when people were forced to evacuate back in 1986. It might be hard to tell if you're not familiar with the canine species, but some of these dogs have uniquely wolf-like features, like their deep wolf eyes clashing against the softness of a pet pup. It's thought that the living dogs must have bred with the wolves of the forest to keep their bloodlines alive, but they still have incredibly short lives regardless. Most of these generations of dog breeds only live for a few years, with the majority not surviving until their adulthood. Most of the dog populations that are still around have gathered around checkpoints throughout the city. They flock to these sections because despite being told strict warnings, there are people who continue to self-settle in the government-restricted zones. The guards at these settlements do ensure that the dogs are cared for, although it's generally short-lived by their short lifespans. Overall, there is an assumption that at least a thousand dogs are still in the area, with more still being born. They may not make the best pets for a lot of the survivors and willing inhabitants of Chernobyl, but they do serve as friends to the downtrodden. But as tragic as it may be, many dogs do carry some contamination on their fur, so please don't pet these poor pups. A fleet of helicopters. They say that you're more likely to crash in a car than an airplane but no one ever mentions helicopters. This copter crash was an unfortunate accident that happened under the command of General Antoshkin, a Russian hero that led the suicide charge to try and stop Chernobyl's leaking power plant. The general had control over a fleet of 100 helicopters that he was rushing to forcefully calm down the overreacting core of the fateful reactor. Each helicopter would scoop up and drop down sand, boron, or whatever else they could load up on to try and stop the damage from spreading. But unfortunately, we already know how the situation concluded. 
The General's entire operation took over two weeks before they called it quits, with the whole team dropping somewhere in the range of 5,000 tons of material to smother the reactor. Enochkin admitted later that he did feel a tickle in his throat as he flew and urgently needed to vomit, but he held it in and completed his tasks as needed. Nearly all of the pilots were exposed to fatal amounts of radiation, but they did put out some fires and prevented a lot of damage that could have potentially led to an even worse fallout. But through it all, General Nikoli Antoshkin actually pulled through. He served over 30 years of his life in the Russian Air Force and eventually died at age 78 from the coronavirus. Sea spot sniff out radiation. If there's one bright side to look at from the many problems caused in Chernobyl, it would have to be the amount of research and technology that came about to combat radiation contaminations. Boston Dynamics, famous for their advanced robotics, even invented a robot dog named Spot to take on a very important mission. Like a real dog, Spot was meant to sniff out certain elements, in this case, radiation and nuclear waste. Spot is designed to take in huge amounts of observational data and create 3D heat maps for each site it visits. From there, it tracks the effects of all of the damage done through electromagnetic waves in the vicinity and passes it along to a group of university researchers. The project intends to improve overall nuclear readouts in a live field but will also showcase the benefits of robotic functions going forward. SPOT has the unique ability to travel closer to radiation than any human and still get accurate readings. This work specifically focuses on the Unit 4 reactor that malfunctioned and triggered the impactful meltdown in the 80s. In order to do its job, SPOT is equipped with five sensor modules and a collimated radiation sensor. These allow it to have a full spectrum of analysis while still being able to travel deep into the radiation. If you're interested in getting SPOT for yourself, whether you have radiation data to analyze or just general field research, Boston Dynamics has listed the robot helper dog for sale. It goes for a pretty penny at $74,500, but for this level of advanced technology, they would say it's definitely worth it. Vehicle Graveyard One of the major projects that took charge in Chernobyl was assigning various zones for people and service workers that needed to take charge. A large amount of equipment was provided during this period, and a lot of that equipment became contaminated by the leaked radiation. In the end, there was so much radiation that a cleaning zone no longer mattered. There was just no way to remove the dangerous amounts of chemicals that seeped into the objects and even some people. So possibly against their better judgment, and with a lack of experience dealing with so high levels of radiation, a burial ground was declared as a last-ditch effort to store the contaminated equipment and keep it away from nearby inhabitants. But even then, digging holes was time-consuming and expensive, and there just simply wasn't enough land to bury everything emanating contaminated energy, so a storage site was established. The largest of these sites was next to a former village called Rosoka. The Rosoka graveyard started off with 800 times the normal radiation levels compared to most places, but has greatly diminished over such a long period of time. Although the site is mostly a storage space for wrecked vehicles, helicopters, and other unusable crafts, a lot of tourists have taken to checking it out as if it were a landmark destination. By 2006, it was decided to reduce and eliminate all of the larger equipment being held, and in 2012, the city zone had been officially liquidated. The only thing left is mostly scrap metal. The Claw of Death Chernobyl will always be a major study case for people to look back on, even as we still deal with the consequences today. More studies and reports continue to come out as scientists and even tourists travel down to the radioactive hotspots and uncover modern artifacts from the disaster site. A digger claw is believed to be one of those important pieces of history that was only recently found. It's thought to have been used to clear up the nuclear disaster and contains enough radiation that one touch could prove to be fatal. Even after 33 years since it was first handled, the impact has hardly lessened or reduced in terms of radioactive volatility. Rob Maxwell is the researcher that found the tool and thinks that it cleared up ultra-radioactive graphite from the power station's messed up core immediately after the explosion. The ejected graphite may have been what gave many firefighters severe radiation poisoning as small, untraceable amounts of it probably blew through the air during the many fires. Maxwell told reporters that there are many things in the zone today for which contact for any prolonged period will definitely kill you. The claw is the most dangerous because it's not roped off or inaccessible like other hazards. The claw was dumped into the forest, probably by Russian officials hoping no one would ever find it. 
but now has almost become a bit of a treasure hunt for those who have heard the story. It's not exactly easy to find, and Maxwell hopes that no one else looks for it, but at the same time, there isn't a truly safe way to dispose of the claw or any other contaminated machine parts. They may just stay there, emitting their lethal particles until the end of time. Red with Radiation All walks of life in Chernobyl were greatly affected and altered over these last few decades, but the environment also had some big changes occur. The red forest surrounding the old nuclear power plant is one of those environments and easily makes up the most radioactive field of trees and plants in the world. The results of the reactor exploding from the heat of the power plant sent a surge of radiation across the forest. This drenched the trees and plants in radioactive material and chemicals on par with being hit by 20 atomic bombs. The damage may have been a bit more subtle than a huge mushroom cloud, but the soil, water, and trees had all suddenly become some of the most lethal elements in the world. Potential witnesses said that the trees were hit and they turned from green to red from the blast and that's where they get their current name. Even 37 years later, the damage is still as clear as ever. A few species of birds and insects inhabit the area, but they all show signs of radiation poisoning affecting their day-to-day -day lives to the point that it's still uncertain what their future biology will hold. The Red Forest has become iconic to the point of appearing in poems, stories, and even video games, showing off the lingering destruction radiation can have on an environment. But if there's one thing to take away from all the negative effects, it's that the wild flora and fauna manage to grow despite their limitations. Without people invading the area or damaging the environment, it looks like nature decided to follow its own path. Mm-hmm. <laughs>